Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. The Savachi syndrome, I'm telling you, I'm like, well, holy shit, that was crazy. Wait for it. Thick and slick. <laughs> Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show Fantasy Supercross Show. If you want to know who not to pick for your fantasy team this week, well, <laughs> you came to the right spot here. I am your host, Travis, and we are here. We are going to wrap up picks from, oh boy, where were we? Minneapolis, and we're going to talk second Triple Crown of the year. Arlington on the phone with me, the usual co host. Just one other one. Not shitting on the chest of the show this week. It is the one and only Justin Hartzell. Hi, buddy. What's up, man? Oh, you know, just hanging out. Just hanging out. Just being awesome. Nice. So, um, nice. Okay. Anyway, before we get started, just want to thank our sponsors. So, uh, presented by Energy Fuel, Premier Custom Trailers, and TLR Coatings. And then also on board with us, Alias Sport, Holster Co., Dirt Bike Depot, JT Cycle, Depth Creative Co., Gutter Works, Isaac Nelson Designs and Clutch Media links in the description to all of them. Go check them out. They're helping us out with prizes, etc. Um, for those of you who don't know, we play on PulpamexFantasy.com in the Pulpamex Fantasy Fantasy stuff, I guess. Uh, our league is Moto Aftermath Show, so go in, create your team, um, go ahead and then uh, join our league and then go to Instagram, follow us and DM us with your team name so that we know who you are. And then if you win a prize, you DM us on there and then we get you your prize at some point soon. So um, we give away weekly prizes and then we also have some cool end of the year prizes, including a sick number one plate that says, Hey, you were the best at our league. Make sure to like subscribe, comment. If you don't watch, if you don't want to watch on YouTube, make sure to check out all the podcast forms of this. So without further ado, we will get into results from last week from Minneapolis. Um, so congratulations to MX Dad five one zero nine one three. He's already reached out to me. He is a local guy. I'm blanking on his name right now. I do apologize, uh, but <laughs> I can't think of it. He DM'd me earlier today. So um, anyway, so your prize, as I told you, will be coming out soon. I gotta, I gotta make a trip to the post office with a bunch of them. So anyway, uh, he won the league at Minneapolis with 312 points. The scores this week were abnormally high, but that is because we were starting the East Coast uh, 250 class, and they kind of, in my opinion, didn't screw them up, but they just were more generous with handicaps. Um, and we didn't really know what was going to happen because there were so many good guys. As we talked about in the main show, there were guys who didn't qualify for the night show who are main event guys there. I mean, there's all sorts of, sorry for that noise in the background. I have a heater going, uh, in the other side of the shop, if you can hear that. But anyway, um, but yeah, so anyway, Justin, you got your team pulled up. Yeah. Yeah. For Minneapolis. Yep, yeah. I have pulled up right now. Cause I finished third. I did not have a banner week as far as high score goes, but I maintained, maintained where I needed to be. So Justin, go right ahead. Tell us about your score. Cause it was pretty good. <laughs> so I did have a pretty good score outside of one 250 guy. Uh, my 250 team, I had Jeremy hand, which is a guy that I said right from the jump that I was going to pick. And it was going to take a very, oh, wait, very hold on, bad. Hold on. Hold on. Your score was okay. What? I thought, never mind. I was confusing you and Cole. Cole spanked us. Your score was okay. Yeah. You were six points okay. better than me. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. So anyways, so I stayed with Jeremy Hand. We had talked about him on the previous show. I was not coming off of the Jeremy Hand pick unless his like day during practice. He was like 40 fastest, which we all knew was not going to happen unless he had bike trouble. So Jeremy Hand got me 52. Enzo Lopes, which he's always done pretty well for me. You know, he's an 8-12 to 12 guy, 10-14. to 14. He also got me 52 points. j Mark got me 23, so, you know, whatever. Like, I'll give or take between the 26 and 20 range, whatever, with All-Stars. Josh Cartwright was the only guy we know. He had some troubles in the LCQ, didn't get in, got a fat goose egg. But I feel like that was – that race was an outlier for him. I feel like he'll be in the mains the rest of the entire year. And then in my 450s, I had Vince Freeze, which I know is a high – or uh, you know, it was a high trend pick. Uh, our pick trend. Benton's freeze at thirty eight. Marv got me twenty six for an all star. 
AP got me 34, and Justin Brayton got me 34 for an overall overall score of 259. The rank was pretty crazy, though, and we had talked about this, Travis, when I got to the house on Sunday, that even with 259 points, my overall rank was 4,911, which I feel like at 259 on most weekends, you'd be in the top 1,500, sometimes the top 1,000. Not even close. But, like I said, caught right. I didn't get any points there, so I had seven out of eight dudes. So maybe if he gets in... Maybe I get lucky and get in the mid two nineties, maybe three hundred if he has a good night. But at two fifty nine I'll take it considering how bad A three went for me. Yep. Yep. I am I am the same way. So I had eight in, which was awesome. Uh, but only had seven that actually gave me any results. So in the two fifty class, uh my all star was Jet. He maxed me out at twenty six. Uh I had Enzo Lopes who maxed me out at fifty two, which was awesome. I then had Filthy Phil who um, got 46, which was a really good finish for Phil. I was hoping for, like, say, mid-30s, so to get 46 points out of him was awesome. Um, and then my one downer of the night uh, between both my teams, really, was uh, Max Volin, who obviously went down, has got a major bruise on his shoulder, etc. cetera. Um, he only got me one because of that crash. Again, I'm with you. If he gets, if he gets even remotely decent points because he was a non-all-star, so if he even finishes, say, in the top 10 and gets me – you know, 30 points, 26 points. I mean, that all of a sudden puts me into like the 270s, 280 range, which is a lot yep. better. Uh, but 253 for a score still maintains my 230 to 260 average I'm shooting for. Um, in the 450 class, I had Stu got me 26. I had Chiz got me 30. Brayton got me 34. And Freeze got me 38, which I think are like at least two, if not three of the highest uh, scores in the 450 class. So yep. I'm yep. all right with that. Uh, Cole yep. scored 275. I don't have his team pulled up, but he, uh, you know, 275, that was a pretty good deal for him. He's still well, way I also behind. Think he had all eight, I also think he had all eight in, and I don't think he had any issues with any of his guys. So. Yeah, I mean, in the 250 class, you got six dudes that scored 52 points. Like, that's not a normal weekend. In fact, before it updated, I was looking at it, and it, there were, I think, nine dudes that had it originally, and then it updated after the finish a little bit, and all of a sudden there were only six, but wild shit. Oh, don't be surprised if that happens again with the triple crown being this weekend. Cause once again, like we talked about, there was guys that would normally make mains that had problems in the LCQ that because they didn't make the mains and they had high handicaps going into the weekend, well, they didn't get in. So those handicaps are going to stay high. So they'll probably get in because they're good. Yeah. It's, I'll just say it's probably not going to shock me if we have really high scores again this weekend with, like I said, it being the triple crown. Cause I just feel there's going to be a lot of dudes looking through this list that still have 13, 14, 15 handicaps that if you would have gone off qualifying for Minneapolis, they would go right into the night show this weekend through yep. Arlington. So hundred yep. percent. So, all right. So moving on to this weekend here. And again, we are going to, uh, we're going to Dallas, Arlington, whatever you want to call it. Uh, triple crown race number two. So again, this is a eight is great and you should have eight in no matter what, because obviously we get to make our picks after the qualifying is all over. Uh, and if you're not, you're just not paying attention. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so in the 250 class, my current team I have right now for my all-star, I've got Forkner at a two. I mean, he's good at starts. He looked good last weekend. I can't pick Jet, so... I'm going to stay up there. You need one of these uh, really decent handicap guys. Um, he's got a two, so I, I feel good with that. Um, yep. And then, honestly, so I have – I got three dudes that are all 15 – it's 15, 16, 16 at this point. And these are oh, guys wow. I think are going to make it in. But this is way subject to change, as we always say, with the triple crowns. So I've got – That LCQ is going to be stupid. Yeah, so I've got Remier Alves at a 16 – um, Which keep in mind, he didn't even make the night show yeah. last weekend. <laughs> but here's but but here's what I'm thinking. no no I have no problem I have no problem with the pick I'm just laughing because it's like Jesus Christ this dude has been a bunch of mains and he didn't even make the night show. Here's my question: Was he one that got caught up like Kessler though? Uh, you know, doubling out that triple or was. something. Like, I'm thinking he was because before that, from the looks or from the sounds of what Jace was telling us around the time that that was happening, I'm pretty sure. I saw Alves' name at like twenty four on the board. Yeah. So. so that's my that's my question there. And then we all know he can race somewhat, so because he was in a lot of mains oh, yeah. last year. So whatever. Oh yeah. Um, I mm -hmm. got Grant Harlan at a fifteen. 
Um, yep. I just think he has a good good comeback weekend here. And then I actually have friend of the show, Jace Kessler, at a 16 because I think he's going to get in this week here. Um, maybe not. And again, that could change because obviously we'll know if he makes it or not. But for right now, I've got those guys. And this is mostly because I outsmarted myself at the last Triple Crown thinking, oh, I'll only pick these double-digit handicap guys. And then I didn't because I thought, oh, well, these other guys will get higher scores because that's just the what the what the stats show. And then here we are. Yep. I outsmarted myself. My score wasn't as great last Triple Crown. So I am going to follow my own advice this time and go with pretty much highest handicap guys I can in the 250 class and maybe in the 450 class. We'll see. But who's your who's your tentative uh, tentative Thursday night team here for 250s? So I agree with you on the Fortner thing. Uh, the two handicap, I just don't see it as a problem. Even if he literally just mails it in, I feel like that with what we saw, if he keeps that going from Minneapolis and his starts are good, um, I just I have a hard time believing he's not going to get four full points. Uh, and I am with you. I would really like to pick guys with high handicaps. Once again, we just don't know. Um, so where I'm at right now, I'm sitting at the rookie who got 15th last weekend, Colin Park at a nine handicap. I really like what I saw from him. I think he did have to go through the LCQ, but his speed was good all day. He was like 21st, I think, which obviously we know wouldn't get him in, but he proved through the heat races and in the man that he's a racer at a 15, if he's a nine handicap, if he does that again, I mean, we're looking at really good points there. Uh, my other guy is Henry Miller, another nine handicap. He actually got one spot better than Colin Park at a 14. Henry Miller's just, he, let's be honest, he may not be the greatest 450 dude, but he's just, he's a solid 250 guy. And he's one of those guys that literally, it, he rarely ever doesn't make a bane. I mean, I know that we've said this about a bunch of guys, but with Henry Miller, that kind of holds true. He just, dude, just knows how to make mains. That's just all there is to it. Um, so I'm going to go with him. And where was my other guy? Okay. Oh, Derek Drake. Um, we all know that Derek Drake, very, very up and down dude. Looks like this Bar X team, everything's working for him. Not a lot of pressure on him. He did a lot better than I thought he would last weekend. He got 12th. He's at a seven handicap. Derek Drake, we do know, is a good starter every now and then. Those bikes definitely have a good motor package behind him. And he is a racer. He is not the best qualifier, but he is a racer. So at this point, I got Fortner, Derek Drake, Colin Park, and Henry Miller. But once again, this is the Triple Crown, so we might get lucky and get a whole bunch of dudes with 12 through 16 handicaps, and we can all fucking go crazy. But um, it's just one of those things that we don't know, because like we said, with this 250 East, there were so many dudes last weekend, like Josh Cartwright. Josh Cartwright qualified like 14th, and you go into Arlington, and he qualified 14th, and he had like a 16 handicap you'd pick that all day long because, you know, the Josh Cartwright can at least put in one good main at a 16 handicap. He gets 22nd, easy math. We know that that's a good score. So, like I said, this is the Triple Crown. We don't know, but I just have a feeling that the scores are going to be really, really high again. Yeah, and there's, dude, there's tons of guys. Like, you look at, like, John Short. He's a 16. He could possibly, like, there's a good chance he's going to make it in. Um, even a boy Scott Mesh, he could make it in. He's dude. a, I think he's at a 16 handicap. Yeah. Like there's, there are so many of these, uh, of these guys that like could make it in here that are going to be high yep. handicaps. Like we could have high scores again this week here. Really, really easy. So, uh, um, I think we're going to, any, I, I do. Any, I think. any first, the finish line for two fifty guys. <sighs> dude, that's a tough one because we have, once again, we talk about all these, these top guys are so, in, I mean, I looked at the track map. It, it's I don't think it's a full lap, but it's a pretty. It's I, I mean, I don't know. I think I think you would uh, you would have to say Jetta Fortner because I think that they're the two best starters. But once again, like you just you don't know. I mean, yep. if I if you were to put a gun to my head, I would probably say Fortner because I'm gonna I, I would almost have to bet money that out of three starts in a row, it's a better chance of him getting a start three different times compared to Jet. Yep. But you don't know, man. Like, fucking RJ could get it one time. j Mark could get it another. And fucking even McAdoo could get a star. I just, I'm I'm not a fan of that. I, I don't know. I, I There's too many guys that are so inconsistent with their starts. So, But if I were to go with one, I'd probably just have to go with Forkner by default. That's who, that's who I have, actually, for mine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. go for it. I, I think I can get into my points area even with a negative 14 if for some reason I miss both of them. Uh, but, yeah, yep. I'm, going, I'm going with Forkner. 
at this point, Jet would be a good pick too. But again, Jet just could, statistically, statistically, yeah. Fortner is the best starter out of those guys. Yep, hundred percent. So, all right, uh, moving on to four fifties here. So my tentative Thursday team all star. I got Jason Anderson. I mean, it's just hard to bet against him, and he's got a one handicap. So like, you feel like he's yep. got to do pretty well. Um, yep. I've got Alex Martin at an eight. Uh, I mean, dude, last week he rode like 14th. crap and still got 14th. So, okay, I'm yep. on board with that. Um, uh-huh. I've got uh, Freddie Noren at a 15 because I think Freddie will make it in on times and that gets us in double points no matter what. So, I mean, he could go like last time and go 22, 22, 22. Uh, but yep. that's a chance I'm willing to take because it gets me double points anyway, and the 450 scores aren't usually that high. Um, and then my last 450 guy, I've got Mr. Consistency from the last Triple Crown, Dean Wilson, with a 999 for ninth overall <laughs> last time. Uh, one handicap, like I'm all right with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on the consistency. Plus, we've got AP out. We've got Ansty out. So there's there's a couple dudes there. Now that's gonna open up for some of these guys with higher handicaps to get in. So again, this could change. Like I'm like Amart might be out for me and he might be a guy for next weekend. Dino, same way. But uh we'll we'll see. So who's on who's on your tentative uh four fifty team here? So right now I got Eli at a two. I mean, let's be real. If we're gonna talk about who is the best triple crown guys in the four fifty class, Eli is probably number one. Yep. I mean, I don't know what his statistic rate on these triple crowns is, but it's got to be close to a 90% clip of winning them. Yep. Um, I'm going to have to go with friend of the show, Kyle Chisholm, which I feel like he's been at this seven to eight handicap for like the whole entire year so far. Yeah. Uh, he's at a seven handicap. He got 15th last weekend, which let's be honest, that's kind of where, where he is. But once again, you talk about AP being out. So you bump him up. Maybe he's in that 12 to 14 range. You know, we know that Chiz, once again, Mr. Consistency over here. Um, I'm also on the A Mark train. Uh, yeah, I was definitely not expecting him to get top four or top 15. I know the guys, there was a lot of guys that did have issues. So that kind of helped him a little bit. Uh, Max having issues, Mikel Rath having issues, so on and so forth. But still, like with the way his day went, going fourth in the LCQ. There's no way you could have convinced me that he was going to do any better than 17th with the way that night was going. So to get 14th, very, very impressive at an eight. Um, and, you know, even though I think I've literally picked this guy uh, one time in the whole time I've been playing fantasy, I got to agree with you, man. Dean Wilson at a one. I would normally not pick Dino at anything less than a three, four handicap. But Mr. Consistency, like you said, 999, AP's out. We know that Dino does have top 10 speed when he's not having issues. It's just, man, like you have some of these guys that have 10 handicaps, like a Starling, he's an 11, a Brees is at a 10, a Clays is at a 10. But even if those guys go, get in, the problem is, is that they're really not any better than 19th. You know, so, okay, you get Brees, he gets 19th, 9, I mean – it's just really hard to pick those dudes. Like yep. we're not far enough along. We're enough of these, you know, 14, one through 14 guys are out yet. There's only one other guy, but I think that his back issues are already starting to flare up. And that's Mikel Rath at a five, but I think his back issues are already starting to flare up. And at a triple crown, normally with a five handicap, a dude that gets starts like him, I'd pick him. But like I said, I think his back is flaring up already and having to do it three times in one night, and that's not going to be a good combination. So yeah, I gotta, I gotta go with Tomac. I gotta go with Chiz. I gotta go with Amar, and I also gotta go with Dean Wilson. I just, I, I think this 450 class is getting to the point that we're really getting slim pickings. And I don't know if you've noticed, but they're not really generous with these handicaps anymore, like they were four rounds ago. Yeah, no, we're definitely. Uh, I mean, when you're looking at like the top score last week was I think Vince Freeze with like 38 points in the 450. It's definitely yeah. getting slim. Um, but that's okay. It just requires us to do a little bit more thinking. So, um, you know, yeah. we'll give her the old college try here. And as we said, it's a triple crown, which I really hate these fantasy shows for the triple crown. Cause it's just like, well, you know, you're going to see who's in there. So just pick the best team you think you can get at that point, And you should get points for everybody, at least something. Yeah. So, well, I think we've also gotten to the point that we've other than like a few guys, like, you know, Cavendish for a few different times, uh, Norin, like we're getting to the point that we're getting the same guys in almost every weekend in the 450 class now. Like yeah. it, 
I, I like I said, there's the few outliers in like third and fourth in the LCQ, and obviously Hill got in there a couple times on the West Coast. It's getting to the point that it's pretty much the same dudes every weekend now. And obviously, the further we get into the series, more di- more guys are going to go down. It's going to be the same. So maybe that does help with the fantasy stuff. But yeah, man, like it's getting really slim picking. And now, like I said, that Max is out. Who who knows long Aaron's going to be out. You know, now you're looking at Bogle with a seven handicap, but like he only got 17th last weekend. Dylan's still in the negative, so like you don't want to do that because that's fucking a, a crapshoot. It's like who you're literally looking at Clayson, Brees, Chiz, and Norin as like who's going to be your fourth guy. Yep. Yeah, Dylan's one of those that's like intriguing to me for this weekend, but it's like, man, he could very easily get fifth and he could very easily get 15th. So, sure. Well, it's shorter, fucking annoying shorter because races. he goes out. And f- yeah, crappy yeah. starts. Like, it just, it just is a recipe for disaster, but man, it's tempting because you know he's going to be there in qualifying, shaking that ass at you, like, ooh, look at how fast my time is. And then you're well, just that's like, the problem. fuck, that start is he- just going <laughs> to. He goes out and throws it at the top of the board, and he goes like four tenths faster. Everybody, and you're like, "Yep, pick him, pick him," <laughs> and then fucking gets a thirteenth place start and works his way into the top five or the whatever. And you're like, "Well, fuck." <laughs> yep, exactly. So, any FFLs for four fifties? I mean, dude, I once again, I don't really pick those until outdoors, but kind of the same thing. Like, I think at this point, you gotta kind of pick between Anderson and Telmac. I mean, I don't really know, and. We don't think I don't think Sexton's racing this weekend. I know that's a controversy for a different time to talk about with everything going on, but I think you would have to pick between Sexton and Telmac and going off the last triple crown. And this is from the track map. Once again, we don't know. Uh, the start looks a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I don't know, man. I think if I were to pick one, I'd probably pick Telmac because the starts have been pretty on point the last couple weekends. But you don't fucking know. Yeah. You just really don't. Like, yeah. at this point, you just you don't know. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, I don't have a 450 FFL. I'll check out the uh, fake start and see what we got. But for right now, I'm out. Yeah. So, uh, any anything else as we uh, go forward here? Or? Um, I don't know, man. I'm trying to look through this list and see if guys that, like, maybe would be intriguing. Like, the only other person I would look at for, if, like, anybody to look at is maybe Hartraft. Yeah. He got 13th last weekend. He's got a four handicap. He's kind of settling into where his place is, which is kind of 12 to 15. He's been super consistent. I know that is, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was top 15 every main at the Glendale Triple Crown. I don't know, man. Like, this 450 class is getting to the point that, like, I just want to throw my iPad at the ground. <laughs> um, I don't I don't know. I mean, dude, so many people are out. Like, that's, that's yeah. the thing. So many people are out at this point. Like, I don't know who you pick. Like, yeah. I, don't know. I, don't I don't know. I don't really have anything. We'll see on Saturday, so. Yep. All right. Well, oh, shit. This has been another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show, Fantasy Supercross Show. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, Aaron G. Fuel, Premier Custom Trailers, TLR Coatings, Alias Sport, Holster Co., Dirt Bike Depot, JT Cycle, Adept Creative Co., Gutterworks, Isaac Nelson Design, and Clutch Media. Make sure to join our league. Good luck to everyone. Again, remember you should have eight in this weekend, and uh, we will be back next weekend to talk Daytona. Daytona. Woo! It's almost here. Daytona. So. All right. Thanks, everybody. Later. Thank you.